wolf had been dominating the gray for hundreds of thousands of years when the dire wolf suddenly disappeared. Yet it was the gray wolf that survived. The anatomy of the two species reveals why. Anatomy is often destiny. An anatomy often tells a story about what actually worked for an animal or for a species for a long time. And the anatomy of the Pleistocene mammals gives us very good pictures of Pleistocene behaviors. At first glance, the anatomy of the two animals is nearly identical, suggesting they acted much the same. But when we take a closer look, we find small but crucial differences between the two. The most distinctive difference is the dire wolf's larger jaw and teeth. Paleontologists believe this would have created a much stronger bite, adapted to bring down the larger Ice Age mammals like bison and horse. Researchers compared other bones and discovered other important differences between the two species. The humerus, or upper arm bone, of the dire wolf, for example, is slightly longer, but significantly thicker than that of the gray. So too is the ulna, or one of the two lower arm bones of the dire wolf. That means the dire wolf was a more powerfully built animal, weighing up to 70 pounds more than the gray wolf. The lighter gray wolf bones suggest it was sleeker and probably more fleet of foot. These differences are subtle, but significant, and likely transform these similar creatures into very different hunters. Every animal has a style of attack which is determined by its physiology. Bears use their size and strength to overwhelm their prey. The cheetah has its speed and agility. The lion, its powerful claws and suffocating bite. The wolf has only two weapons, its weight and its mouth. In both cases, the dire wolf held the advantage over the gray. But by how 